Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Nutrition Series. The ileum is the third most common site for neuroendocrine cancer and so I thought it would be most appropriate to talk about something that affects so many of you. The ileum is the last part of the small bowel and it measures roughly 300 centimetres long, which is about three metres. Um, if surgery is undertaken, varying degrees of the ileum are often taken away um, and sometimes also the large bowel is taken away. For example, during a right hemicolectomy, um, varying degrees of the last part of the ileum are taken away. That's called the terminal ileum. Um, some functions of the ileum are quite specialised and this includes the active absorption of bile acids or bile salts and the absorption of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 and fat malabsorption occur when more than 60 to 100 centimetres of ileum have been resected, so when that amount has been taken away um, and that includes the, the removal of the terminal ileum. If 100 centimetres or more of ileum have been resected, um, we then see something called bile acid malabsorption um, and this reflects in, in loose stools. So I just want to talk a little bit about bile acid malabsorption. I'm just going to talk about type 1 bile acid malabsorption today. So this is the type when there's a problem with the terminal ileum where the reabsorption of the bile acid takes place normally. And the causes of this problem include inflammation, huge desmoplasia and scar tissue where the tumour has been or, or diseased areas, um, removal of the terminal ileum due to conditions such as neuroendocrine cancer and Crohn's disease. So normally after leaving the liver, the vast majority of bile acids are reabsorbed over a relatively short section of the terminal ileum. They re-enter the enterohepatic circulation and are then reused six to ten times per day. Um, bile acid production in the liver is regulated by fibroblast growth factor 19 secretion, which is produced in the terminal ileum. So if there's no terminal ileum present, you, sh you sh show signs of loose and sometimes acidic stools. Um, that's something that we call bile acid diarrhoea. So a CCAT scan is used to diagnose the problem. Um, and for most patients, they will start a bile acid sequestrant. So on to vitamin B12. Ileal resections of less than 20 centimetres don't tend to cause a problem with B12. Um, however, if you've had 20 centimetres or more taken away from your terminal ileum, um, almost always you'll end up with vitamin B12 deficiency. Problems like um, distal small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, um, where there's malabsorption around the terminal ileum um, because of the overgrowth of bacteria, can also cause B12 deficiency. So normally B12 absorption starts in the stomach where it binds to intrinsic factor and something called R protein um, and then it's eventually absorbed in the terminal ileum. Vitamin B12 plays a key role in DNA and cell metabolism and long term deficiency can cause severe irreversible damage so it is something serious. Um, effects of B12 deficiency include things like fatigue, bone marrow suppression, neurological features um, including stroke. Um, it's also been recognised that B12 deficiency can cause um, symptoms of psychosis and extreme things like mania, memory impairment, um, fatigue, irritation and personality changes. Deficiency can be treated though with vitamin B12 supplementation um, which if given for life, has uh, the potential to improve well-being and, and long longevity. Um, so injections are usually given every month or every three months um, if 20 centimetres of the terminal ileum has been lost due to disease or surgery. So I just wanted to touch on the subject of the ileocecal valve. Um, so this valve separates the um, 
bottom of the small intestine, the terminal ileum and the colon, and it holds all the bacteria and the fluid inside the large bowel normally. Um, however, when you have this removed and there's no valve anymore, you'll notice that stools often come in a hurry. <laughs> Um, and there's also something that can happen in some people where the bacteria will move upwards into the terminal ileum or the ileum that's been left after surgery um, and, and can cause um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which I touched on earlier. So small parts of the ileum can be removed without having too much of an impact um, on nutrition, but it can take a long time for your stools to settle down to a normal stool. It can take up to two years before that happens because these parts of the bowel that are remaining didn't have to absorb these other nutrients. Um, and so it takes time for the um, inside of the small bowel to adapt. Unfortunately, at the other end of the spectrum, where large amounts um, are removed, there's something called short bowel syndrome. And that's where um, less than 200 centimetres of viable small bowel um, is left because of surgery or because of um, a large area of disease. Um, it's shown by malabsorption symptoms, so diarrhoea, steatorrhea, huge loss of fluid and salt and malnutrition. And this is um, specifically managed by intestinal failure dietitians. So I think in any surgery it's key to know what you've had removed. Um, but especially in bowel surgery, you really need to know what's been removed and what's left because the nutritional consequences are huge. We need to know exactly what you've got um, available to absorb your food and any um, nutritional supplements. So that's it for this week. Um, tune in next week for episode four of the new endocrine cancer nutrition series.